गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबॉडी टूडेज क्लास इज ऑन हेल्थ केयर इंश्योरेंस एंड हेल्थ केयर एनालिटिक्स एंड इज एप्लीकेशन एज वी नो इन ऑल द इंडस्ट्री हेल्थ केयर इज वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट कंज्यूमर्स वेर वी हैव टू हैव पीपल हु आर इन टू द एनालिटिक्स एक्सपर्ट डोमेन सो वेन वी डू हेल्थ केयर एनालिटिक्स एज वेल फॉर फॉर द हेल्थ केयर इंश्योरेंस वन वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग component are now getting attached they are the management of uh, of the artificial intelligence part so what the artificial intelligence actually will go into it we have already learned the machine learning supervised model unsupervised model semi supervised model last class we have done some classification logistic regressions right then we have explained some ant colony optimization remember that part i was showing and same was there in the android application the code part is there i have just explained the thing regarding entire coding part i have kept it uh, for all of you so that you can practice if you wish right so after that it goes this is actually the bind span modeling it comes then comes the artificial neural network then comes the deep neural network again in deep neural network more you go into it you will go to the recurrent neural net lstm feed forward neural net you will go but the purpose of today's is a kind of a practical interactive session hands on session that how one by one the steps occur till you get the result so our purpose of today's class is right from taking the photographs of ours then what are the components required how we do the weight transfer how it is related to the industry i will also explain that what is the industrial application for the healthcare as well as the insurance so today we will complete the healthcare part insurance uh, analytics using ai and tomorrow there will be another uh, Uh, part insurance fraud analytics because fraud analytics is also there in our course right so once we complete then we will go to the fraud analytics part okay fine so what we are going in a small sample set we are going to train the model for which we will use the simple model of a uh, facial expression whether we can take the facial uh, recognition part how it is related to the depression part because nowadays the insurance company are moving their uh, system and the premium they are making it dynamic in the developed countries dynamic means if you are doing well your premium should go down and if you are not doing well health wise your premium should go up so they want to have a dynamic picture how you are doing well how your fitness is so it's very important to get a very accuracy model and the image part when the image analysis came image net came we find that the cnn these are very powerful tools so that if, if these are used by the industries for the image analytics part and to get to know that okay nowadays mobile phones are there they will give you an application very soon it will come it's already coming in us and other countries that you have to take the photograph and then your premium will come that okay you are doing well so premium will gradually they will give you some gifts or something uh, lifestyle some gym package like that they are, and in this way it will be very dynamic those who are not doing well their premium whatever they are offsetting you that will go up so basically we find the insurance industry will be driven by machine learning by the artificial intelligence so we are getting the scenario why we are doing this right if from the face we can get the two important parameters one other than the recognition is the diabetic parameter as well as the hypertension parameter and these are the basic constituents of a healthcare that if you are non diabetic you are having a very good cardio then you will take care your immune system will take care of the rest of the part right so we are going to take the frontal as well as the uh, two ears right and left so entire face part comes into the picture we are not leaving anything and then with the time permits more and more will form maybe two groups will form so that more ideation more what we can do last time i think we formed five groups right so right five each of 10 groups so this time groups will be just we will make it two because uh, we have to train the model lot of parameters are there and that will be a kind of an assignment to do will supporting content will be sharing over email so that you can practice it it's not that difficult because everything what is difficult will just show that these are the thing and basic part will discuss that the weight transfer the propagation backward propagation model so these are the basics so that part we will again just brush it up right over say goodness yes 
thank you akash akash will be helping us uh, today uh, for taking the photographs and then he will be giving to krishna krishna will keep it at a place so that all can access and use it right so each person will have a three photographs you can start with mine sarthak i think everyone i have introduced sarthak sarthak is my uh, student at ms candidate uh, hi everyone i am sarthak pandan i have been studying under so for the past one year i suppose yeah. and uh, i am a research associate at ic data science and i'll be helping out for this lecture for studying basically dns right so let's start with even start with my after the class we'll take the rest right so just you can see the first two rows will do and then we'll start the thing and uh, just you wait uh, before the when we class ends 10 minutes will take the rest of the candidates right so you can start with myself ab idhar hi aa jao ek ek karke aa jana do do jo jo hai okay that will be great so one by one you can come you can see one for this time you can see you just stand in the front and take my frontal then you stand in the right then left right so what has to stand like that so oh, this way I think without specs is better for the optic diabetic ones, so that will be better. Fine. So you can take his and yes, this come. so till now one interesting part is not there everyone has taken the facial part but here nowadays it is just coming up with the facial part and we'll try to map uh, one is the recognition is there first step then about the depression is there next is the diabetic is there next is the hypertension is there entire system gives a complete look right you dekh sakte sahi le na to in dono ek आगे जाके ले लेंगे बट यू हैव टू टैग इट वेल नेम एंड एवरीथिंग डेमोग्राफिक वेरिएबल आई विल टेल यू एवरीथिंग हैज टू कम राइट इवन इट विल बी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग यू विल नो दैट गोइंग फॉरवर्ड दैट नॉट ओनली अबाउट द हेल्थ इट शोस दैट व्हेन यू आर मैक्सिमम फिट मेंटली आल्सो दैट कम्स इन picture into the face and gives a good result in the examination also so all these are related face gives a very good index of how the brain is performing how it is uh, coping up the situation and how we can cope the anxiety part is just like that so anyone absent today right so anyway uh, i think mohan uh, and Akash is knowing that they will collect more of the samples. Well, we have to just you can see that when the samples are ne- less, it is not that performing well. As the samples go up, you will find the neural net and this part works very well. So entire procedure you are learning yourself, you can do it for all this, and this can be a very good measures also. Two groups will help each other to form a report. It will be. For the great place also future generation they can take this as a treatise that students performance is related to the facial part is very much that this group of students is doing very well because they have a very positive part they have the confidence part so all this part comes to this
done, right? So just uh, rest of you don't uh, leave. Uh, in between, we'll have 10 minutes break also. We'll continue this uh, so that another two rows will be done. And at the end, last two rows will do. In this way, all rows will be done. Yes, so uh, today I think all can come over here. Uh, most of them are here, over here. So let's uh, take this one only. In that you can all sit here, right? Because we will also do the board over here. All. So today we are uh, just uh, doing the machine learning part. Uh, also, your assignment, uh, I think they are having the pen drive. Just put it in pen drive and give it. So that I don't miss. So that part is required. Uh, if time permits, I will discuss that problem, uh, the Sun Michael cancer and the biopsy part. What is the, uh, what should be the procedure that you will apply in the industry? How the industry works into that? The problem that I have given. So if time permits, we'll go into that. Obviously, we are having a hands-on uh, session of the deep learning today. Uh, first part. You, the obviously taking the photograph images, then how it is getting pain will do. IoT application in the healthcare insurance part, uh, quiz part in the class, uh, I will we'll discuss the areas. Uh, maybe in the exams it comes some, some part as a quiz, we club it. That either you will have something if time permits on 17th, a quiz, otherwise if it doesn't time permit, it will come your exam. Healthcare analytics assignment discussion of the um, uh, business and this business insights will be discussed today. So artificial intelligence practical sessions and the deep learning phase detection. Again, deep learning is used as I've explained. Uh, one of the major thing is the diabetes. In diabetes detection, it is used, and nowadays uh, things are going to a non-invasive procedure. So nowadays it should not be pricked. So more and more artificial intelligence will be used. To have an initial prediction and even uh, it can be used that so that people can take a measure like if uh, the age is 20 and this is the condition if he takes measure so he may not be diabetic in 50 he may be diabetic in 70 so this is the way the predictive modeling and artificial neural net is working that how we can improve maybe uh, the health score index we are falling at 80 we are still healthy but 80 will come down to 60 after 20 or 30 years based on the lifestyle and the stresses. So from now we can move accordingly. That okay, this 80, how we have to manage this for 80. So more and more we are shifting healthcare insurance and healthcare analysis shifting to that domain. So deep learning and depression, obviously depression and anxiety, people doesn't know that they are into depression, they are having anxiety. So this helps very much from the facial part and uh, this gives an index because these are the latent kind of symptoms that continues and creates a lot of BP going forward for you can see a lot of aged people are having BP because this went unmanaged, this anxiety, this went unmanaged, uncontrolled and that becomes culminated into a uh, hypertensive or a diabetic patient because stress is one of the component which triggers so much of the population into two major diseases. So I think uh, some of you are new to deep neural net, isn't it? So for them only, uh, this is a common image net. Deep neural network consists of a hierarchy of layers. So these layers get trained, whereby each layer transforms the input data into more abstract representation. That is the age, nose, face will be there. And output layer combine those features to make the prediction, right? So basically the prediction will be done uh, based on the input layer is taking into it and gradually it becomes the final prediction layer. I think uh, you can add one or two points into it. Uh, hi everyone, uh, how many of you here know about artificial neural networks? 
Okay, so don't worry about that. We're going to be starting from the basics only. First of all, the reason why artificial neural nets became more and more important was because we started realizing that optimization techniques in general are already built into human beings itself. We started taking biologically inspired means to do computing. So when, for example, I, me and you look at a face, we are actually transferring the image through our brain, through the neurons in our brain. And then some computation is taking place in our neurons, which helps us classify what that image is. For example, let's take a small example of, an, uh, of a neuron in our brain, which has dendrites and... Uh, don't mind my drawing, please. So just to imagine that the neural part of the brain, that's actually the similar part we are trying to sign. So this is like a, a model of a neuron in which the cell body is called the soma and these are called the dendrites and axons. So any input coming to a neuron undergoes computation in the model of biological computing and then it is transferred through this cell body uh, out, of the, out of the axon here and then it is uh, this is again connected to other neurons in the brain so a similar model has been developed for computing in which we consider one node as a neuron which is getting certain inputs from outside the world and then it performs some computation here and that computation is taken out for example let me say that i am getting some input x1 and x2 over here and some weight on this connection is w2 and this one is W1. So the computation here being performed is a summation is being taken of the products of these. Summation over Xi into Wi for all inputs. And then a function is being performed here that we don't know what it is. A function, this function here is called the activation function. So now for example, once we get this output, we call this as the input to this node Y. So it is called Y in. This terminology will be there, but we will be sharing. You are getting this that the weight transfer is happening. So weight transfer part comes from the HP part, analytical hierarchy program, which was developed long back. And what we are doing uh, in weight transfer that initially we are just assuming the weight. Suppose if you have now, I am giving you in your own terms, 16 variables. Remember cervical cancer, you have 30 variables. Isn't it? The problem that we have recently done. But we don't know what weight or what intensity it is actually giving. So we can divide uh, all these variables, weight by 30, 0 0.00 some value will come. So that's the, initially we put the value so that it learns, right? Then it learns and at the end we find out the value of the exact, what weight it is. So that that function actually acts and determines its intensity. So similarly, exactly this is happening. So try to make an analogy over here that whatever happens in your brain is exactly what we're trying to model. So for example, if you have some memories which are more fresh in your mind than others, that means that those memories trigger neurons in your brains which are which are having more connect more uh, connected weights on them. The connections between those neurons are being made stronger so that they fire together. In a similar manner, we are making weights over here that are applied to the inputs and then those are multiplied and taken here uh, to produce the in, uh, y in value and then a function is applied here f of y in which finally gives you your output this is the basic model of one neuron so in our brain we know there are billions of neurons and that is why we came up with artificial neural networks so artificial neural networks are basically a connection of such computational models of neurons in which you provide one input expecting certain outputs and then modifying these weight parameters based on what output you got and how different it was from the one that you expected. So uh, in a similar manner, uh, the way we do this in computer science is we back propagate the errors that we get at the end layers. For example, if this is a neural net that I have. So before back propagation, uh, I will explain uh, this slide, then we'll go to the back propagation. At that time, prepare the diagram. Right. So why we are using the deep learning? Because it is analogous to the human brain we have seen. Now it's clear. 
it learns complex and abstract features so basically these are the abstraction so abstract feature it has to take complex feature it has to take and from there it will learn and only the learning transfer will happen right so this comes to one of the important part is application is there speech recognition is there computer vision is there and nlp is there these are the three component these are the three pillars that are being used over here and in recent time deep learning has gained momentum due to its computational resources so what we mean by resources any idea access to the big data what is the resource for the big data how we handle those resource so resources means we are talking about the hardware previously what we had in the hardware cpu now most of the hardware we are having gpu which can do this deep neural net this function at a higher speed speed is required for learning these things millions of cell has to do the learning transfer so speed is the most important part that is done by gpu so how how to use those components like ubuntu you have to use it you have to use cuda for this this part we have put in the lms there is a introduction session more into it so there we will learn how to use those activation uh, task and uh, load those packages to run this mode clear yeah. so i am not going into that because it will take lot of time that you can download from there clear yeah. so these are the three uses so learning in deep neural net it happens sample level data comes and then it forward it and then the network to get helps in propagation so update the connection weight we have just explained in a simple way that how the weights are taking x1 y1 x2 y2 and in this way it increases it increases to the n number of the times and it gets in a function and this is the activation function so that makes on the back propagation part right this then back propagation in a simpler way we can open that one uh, all of you are uh, now familiar with the uh, python uh, started everyone then is good so before we start uh, with the the code part and all let me first explain how back propagation takes place here um, here this is an example of a neural network just like the one i have drawn here it's a multiple yeah and the uh, the layers from which we are getting the outputs y1 to ym this is the output layer and the one in the beginning is the input layer everything in between is called the hidden layers the ones which we do not know what they represent and so in all of these connections these arrows that are given they have weights and the input coming to the node x1 on the left is a, is small x1 and it gets multiplied by all of the weights all of the arrows that it's going through and then it reaches the other nodes where it is summed up and that node then applies an activation function to produce its output which is then carried forward so this is the feed forward phase back, um, uh, back propagation and learning in learning in neural networks takes place in three phases first is the feed forward phase where you get an input and then you apply it to the first layer feeding it forward and multiplying it by the weights and adding it into the other nodes this is analogous to everything happening in the brain which is why it is being done and uh, in the fact is known that artificial neural networks they can learn very complex and arbitrary functions that we won't be able to mathematically model otherwise so coming to the first phase for example here yes, here one point i must tell uh, like we are doing this images right suppose what happens in healthcare insurance company big company they have given insurance to the millions of people now they can call and they can check it takes a lot of time a lot of expenses that that you take for diabetes you take for hypertension so you, it will take a lot, lot of time so tomorrow they can ask you that you take a photograph this free photograph i send that based on that they calculate even they suggest that you take this kind of medication or lifestyle changes so naturally this is one of the important point because of, uh, i think we can go to the previous one here the back propagation of the errors it means it will only forward the learning part and those errors are filtered right so that means that errors it is not carrying forward that's why it become so strong and weight updation every time the weight gets updated it's not static these are the three major components so any question comes to you what are the three phases right 
So these are the three phases. Or how many phases are there? It happens. So we have a three distinct phase. Clear? Does anyone have any doubts up till now about the feed forward phase? This is the feed forward phase we have explained. You just get an input. You multiply it by the weights. And yes, please go ahead. The biases will be taken into consideration in the next slides as well. So, um, can we move forward with the second phase? All of you understood for the new, new who are new for the first time. Clear, everybody. Fine. So here, for example, v zero j in this equation represents the bias at that node as well. A bias is just a weight given uh, to an input node, which is characteristic of the data and is not and is supposed to be learned without any consideration of the input and uh, here you can see summation of xi and the weights is taking place in the node and further on we go on to apply the function activation function f on the input zn same activation function we did for what it is for the multiple right? uh, similarly the same process takes place for the other nodes as well and now coming to phase two, we we back propagate the errors at the end. For example, let's say that I uh, so let's say that I'm given. Uh, you all know what supervised learning is, right? So we have some input given and some output associated with that input, which ideally should have come out of the model. So first of all, we give x1, x2, xn as input to the get an output let's say y and the actual output was supposed to be t so now we know that the error in the output that we have gotten is t minus y so our job is to somehow use this information to change these weights all of the weights here and to do that the algorithm in the industry is back propagation algorithm so for that first of all we compute delta k for every output node output layer we are going to compute tk minus yk which is the error in the node's output so basically error we are every time controlling the error it is not going forward it is getting back propagated right now we are making the sequence and um, once you've computed tk minus yk we multiply that by the uh, by the derivative of the activation function which was used to get that output in the first place this is uh, this is to update the weight over or to all of the input connections coming onto that node. For example, here it is given delta k is equal to t k minus y k into f dash of whatever was coming inside that node. So this information is going to be stored in all of these nodes. All of the output layer nodes will be getting t k minus y k into whatever the input was applied to the derivative of their activation function. Now. Uh, so, everybody clear about the derivative of the activation function? Any doubt till now? Because this is important. We have started with this and then we have multiplied into when multiple neurons work together and we have uh, every time control the biases and the error is back to one. Clear? This sequence is coming. After facial part, these are the next sequence. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, for example, when you are computing this value which is coming out of the node, there is a cost associated, there is a cost function associated with every learning uh, every learning algorithm and that cost function depends on what function you are applying. So if you want to make changes to the parameters of the cost function, all the cost function which is there has parameters as these weights. So once you have those weights and you want to modify them, you need to see how changing a value as input to that info, uh, activation function will change the value of the weight. So, for example, if you know that I want to change my weight based on some parameter, that is the error over here. So, I need to multiply that by how much uh, how much slope there is on that graph and where I can find the minima of that graph. So, this basically acts as a slope over here, telling us in which direction to update the weights. Right. So, it will automatically learning itself. So this is the advantage uh, of this neural network that it constantly learns itself by updation of the weights. So he has put a very important question and that is the answer for us. Yeah, so uh, similarly we are going to um, uh, calculate the deltas for all of the output nodes and then these will 
this phase is just for calculation of the deltas of each of the nodes. We will come to the updation of the weights in the next phase. So for every node, similarly in the output, we calculate the delta. And now, how do we calculate the deltas for the hidden layers? For the hidden layers, we uh, do the exact same thing um, where the deltas computed in the layer previous to that, that is the one in forward because we are going backward now. So in the layers in front of it, the connections which are mapped are just reversed. And all of the deltas of the previous layer of the layer in front are transferred back in the same way being multiplied and then summed up at the node in question. For example, if I have delta over here as delta k and the weight over here is w7, so I will just reverse this connection, transfer delta k multiplied by w7 over here to this node. Similarly, if there were more nodes sending outputs to uh, sending inputs to um, this layer, this node, then those would have been multiplied and added as well. So now let's say I have the information over here at this node. A similar by a similar logic, I'm going to apply f dash or whatever the input to this node was. So now that delta gets stored here. Each node after phase two is going to have a delta associated with it. So now you are understanding the equation uh, that we have put it over here, 0.25 into 0.5491, right? So each is calculating the value and each weight is getting calculated. The weights are going to be updated in the next phase. Everything up till now is just to calculate the deltas of each of the nodes. Now, um, the derivation of back propagation stems from gradient descent optimization in which first of all we try to minimize a cost function by updating the parameters of our model. So once we have calculated the deltas in the next phase, coming to phase 3, you can take a look at these equations once, they are exactly what I have told you. And now we come to the updation of the weights phase. For example, if I have a weight W and I have to update that. So let me call this W old. This will be assigned the value. This is an assignment operator. This will be assigned the value uh, W new is equal to W old plus alpha times the, uh, the value which is on that connection multiplied by the delta of the node. So let's say for example, I want to update this weight. So I'll start from this way actually and firstly update all of these weights then come to this way and this is done for one input output pair. So let's say I want to update W6. So I will write W6 new equals W6 old plus alpha times Xi into delta. Xi would be the value coming from this uh, node 3 to node 5 and delta is the value associated with this node that we calculated in the previous phase. Last phase value will become your delta that comes into it, and then it last phase value also comes as the old. So in this way, we are updating weight every step. So weights get updated, and we move to the next step. This parameter over here, this is called the learning rate in gradient descent. Uh, how gradient descent really works is it takes a derivative of your cost function and sees in which direction moving the parameters of the cost function results in decrease in the value of the cost function. So for example, and this factor here controls by how much do you want to step with each input and output pair. So if this has a very large value, you will be, you know, you'll be moving very fast across the space of the uh, gradient descent model. And uh, subsequently you could miss out on the minima value by overshooting it. So this value is a hyperparameter which has to be considered called the learning rate of the model. So now so once learning rate is very important. Learning rate of the model everywhere is most important. Right? So this actually itself is a very important point which gets at every node and then it gets transferred. Learning rate gets transferred, the learning transfer happens. And it moves to the next neuron and it takes the next feature. So all this feature add up at the end to give you a particular distinct feature of it and then it understand and give you the creative model. Uh, so here for example, this is the bias node in question. The input to the bias node 
is always considered to be 1 and the weight of this connection is called the bias. This is similar to any other weight which you will have to learn as well. And uh, here for example, updation of weights has now taken place. T, the actual output is coming in over here. The error is being computed. The deltas of these nodes are being calculated. And then in the third subsequent phase, all of the weights coming into those nodes are being updated. This is all done for one input and one output pair. For example, if you had 100 images, like the ones we've taken right now, all of these images will be associated with some output that you're trying to learn. So once you have supervised set of data as to what input maps to what output, then you can compute this error and backpropagate it to change the weights of your network which were randomly initialized. So in this way, an artificial neural net is trained over a series of inputs and outputs that you have. For example, now, uh, and this entire process, training, this entire process is called training of the neural network. So once you have done it for one set of images, the entire process is repeated for all of the images again. It might not be clear to you right now how images get associated with these nodes, but we'll come to that in deep learning. So right now just consider ANNs as a method of computing outputs from inputs and managing those weights based on the errors. So you can just try also practicing that old way with the alpha and the delta value, how it is getting computed. We'll just uh, show the here, yeah, the weights calculation. So this is actually ha happening at the back. This is actual the theory, right? Where, how we are getting the from the input, the output and correctly mapping of the images. So that every time uh, like you have seen when you work with the cat model it will even if you show the dog it will not say dog because it is taking every time the feature the parameters it is optimizing and each level the learning transfer is happening and this is the equation so these are the steps now all we are going step by step at each level we have first discussed about the neurons this gets simulated to the competition model then in the competition model how each level is the activation part, this activation model, and then how we are having the weights. Next, when we are having the weight, weight updation is very important. We have explained here the weights that are getting updated, and then we have shown how the new weights are getting updated against the old, and error is getting back propagated, and then we learning is getting front, the transfer is getting transferred to the next weight, next set of the neurons, and it's learning. In this Let's say, for example, that you have uh, 10 photos of cats and you 10 photos of cats mixed with some photos of dogs. So now you want a computer algorithm to tell you what these photos are, classify them, one for cat, zero for dog. So um, the way this works is you will show one by one all of these photos to your neural network model. And uh, if the output, let's say, comes zero for a cat, then the actual output was 1 and then your error would be 1. So your weights would be updated in such a manner that next time your model has learned that getting that specific input should get an output of 1. And this process is repeated for all of the images in the training set and this entire process is done multiple times. One of this process is called one epoch. The more epochs that you take, the better your model will train. And the more data that you have to support it, the better. And here one point is that when we will train the model with the epoch, what happens when the data set is less, then we train into a less number of epoch, right? When the images increases, then obviously we can have a very good increased number of the epochs, right? For example, if we have taken 50 photographs of us and we are going to a Kumala, from there you can easily identify that who is lost or not. Immediately it will take a scan and tell who, where the person is. So these are the advantages. Out of so many faces, it will exactly recognize all 50 of us. Yeah, so what is deep learning? Yeah. Right. See, uh, for example, the way you said it, like for example, if a cat resembles a dog, then the model should take that into account as well. Cats aren't a specific, uh, cats for example as input are not supposed to look all the same. Our model has to learn that as well, what is the variation in the cats. Which is why we cannot use more easy models 
to uh, fathom the uh, decision boundary in the space for example even you see the lords different type of dog breeds spaniel alsatian uh, right uh, then uh, german shepherd that also the model learn from the fox for that, example okay, this eyes part is this much this forehead part this nose part it has been constantly learning this part so just assume for a second for example that the only features which distinguish dogs and dogs and cats are x1 and x2 the ones i have mapped over here so this value of x1 and this value of x2 let's say for example is a 1 that is it is a dog sorry it is a cat and somewhere here around these points are found cats assuming that these are the only features which distinguish them these could be like 50 60 features which would result in a 50 dimensional space and these ones and zeros will be distributed in that space the classifier is supposed to find a boundary for example which can which it can calculate based on these parameters and see on which side of these it lies and therefore classify the point that you were making what if, what happens if they resemble uh, certain dogs as well certain cats so that that part would be like if a cat lies somewhere over here Dog so or lies somewhere here yeah so the weights that we will be modifying will result in the change of this boundary and would probably make the boundary a little bit like this that somewhere around here cats can also be found so the weights that are being updated are actually the decision boundary here yeah. that's why we did one thing exactly to overcome this problem see this very good problem you told that what background learning we are taking right so here we have taken with the face the years we have taken so always remember that when they have taken as a example where the cars is there they have tried to cross validate with the hills but this parameter was so abstract that it is changing and it is giving a wrong error so we have not taken background anything we have taken the same person so try to take the same feature for example let the lights for the different cars right from the mercedes and they have a special things changes into that so that becomes a marker so we always we have to take a strong marker for that here we have taken the years as a marker so that this kind of error gets further minimized with the face even if the facial part have more similarity or some kind of that with the years it easily you are able to do and deep learning and artificial neural nets these are all based entirely on the quality of your data that you have so for example that you mentioned if cars have certain backgrounds which are interfering with the classification then it is the job of the data scientist to actually take into account that whatever noise is there in the data be removed prior to the training of the model so that happens in a totally separate pipeline called the preprocessing of the data so it is the job to remove any such possibility Just so to make it more likely, experts. what is pre-processing? I will show you. We have marked into a, a, a kind of a thin patches data. This data came uh, from uh, US universities, and it was patches are there. So what happens in the skin? Hairs are there, right? So what we did to remove the hairs, we used dark razor as algorithm. So it will what it will do? It will pre-process the data, remove all the hair part. and then it will take only this part without the hair there is no hair secondary what happens for example skin to improve the accuracy of the model we have done segmentation in classification segmentation means some of the skin diseases will have only at the corners the features are there these features we have found these features are found and this gives to a particular kind of a disease somewhere for some diseases the features are into the center so again what happens we train the model with those features and then our accuracy gradually increases so that's the way we have to do the feature optimization is very important for different cases we can give the examples that we have worked and how will we improve because everywhere it is not published it is just based on reading the literature who has used what algorithm to improve that and then only we get it problem is absolutely right but we have to then work into it that how we get some eliminate the features as much as possible and then construct we a special features for that particular car maybe in that case it would have been uh, we would have asked them put your car logo into the image and the logo of the company or the brand of the company gives a more accurate as a validation parameter so that way we have to think of the features
there's no way how so uh, coming back to deep learning why do we actually need to use deep learning deep learning is just a metaphor for neural networks which are really deep like for example the ones which are in our brain the neural networks in our brain are so deep learning so complex functions that modeling them mathematically and optimizing them for training a model is not feasible at all so let's say i have a very deep neural network which i want to learn something and i have data for whatever i wanted to train now i will apply back propagation to that network and the analogy would be that the more and more complex the tasks of classification or learning become the more and more complex this boundary becomes in a higher dimensional feature space so this seems to be a very simple model in which we have just two features a two dimensional plane and a straight line uh, differentiating both the classes that we have so deep learning would what deep learning would do is have many more features have uh, many skewed data points as well and it would try to learn a very complex boundary like for example uh taking somewhere around this part if it finds ones over here and something like that so it will build a classification model which can fit the entire data well in complex arbitrary ways that we will not be able to understand so yeah. here i will explain one part in the previous data uh, we have shown one healthcare data remember no but prescription how it is to be done a lot of parameters i have showed that how doctors are able to decide what to pre uh, prescribe what not whether new drugs they will prescribe or old drugs they will prescribe so that comes as a decision parameters so when decision parameters we have further worked with some uh, analytical hierarchy programming hp it is called whether the doctors are good adapters or bad adapters so there it comes this kind of boundary that if a doctor falls in good adapter it will uh, doctor will try to take the new drug if it's not a good adapter of a technology he will take the the will not prescribe the drug so it's not problem with the drug got it it uh, determines the character and the boundary then we find that some of the bad uh, adapters are also prescribing and good are not so this zone is called the fuzzing and there the problem the limitation is that it is the boundary is straight that's why hp could not be taken forward and that's why deep learning replaced hp because here the boundary becomes flexible so you understood from the other supervised learning this boundary min max optimization all this that comes the solver problem i have given in the android is min max optimization problem going forward hp also i have given hp and topoxys is also there in the for your understanding but this is the only advantage it will learn itself it will just think of this sequence it is going this way and it will make its own way so that how we can demarcate the correct features and take it don't take the error features that's why it said more the images you train more accurately you can train things for example next time what happens if you have a large data set you can say that okay uh, these are the features if you are having of this class they will do very well analytics when they go into the job after 6 months all the companies are happy with all of your performance so have we studied logistic regression we have yeah so uh, just to bring you up to speed with what this net is doing a single node uh, is summing up all of the inputs multiplying with the weights applying an activation function in logistic regression the exact same thing is happening where the uh, where the sigmoid function is used instead of the activation function here so once we use the sigmoid function it gives us a value between 0 and 1 which we use as a separator at 0.5 to classify which class it belongs to so here a neural network one node behaves like an entire logistic regression classifier so imagine what thousands of such nodes could classify if logistic regression is already so powerful so um, now coming to uh, learning in deep neural networks you have sample labeled data you forward it through the network to get predictions you back propagate the errors and then update the connection weights this happens in a loop and that happens in the number of epochs that you're trying to do so Phase, we will yeah. always get question how to model the epoch so that we will again explain even we have that that how we set the model value of the epoch how many epoch you are going to train it what are the based on the images that you have so remember those terms activation function epochs Learning transfer bias. I think someone told what they put there. Bias was a very good point.
about this. So these are the questions you will face going forward when you appear the interview. So you have to connect it, right? So these are the three techniques. So uh, deep learning can take place in various kinds of architectures of neural networks. For example, as I stated, having pictures and then propagating them through a network is not going to be the same way as putting in numbers over here and getting a number output, right? So for example, if we have a 32 cross 32 image in red, blue, in red green and blue, so that would be 32 cross 32 depth 3 of an image with values ranging from 0 to 255. So on red, green, blue, you will find RGB images. Just from the newer ones, you will, we always take the colored images, you will find RGB images and these are the dimension. Just know the dimension we have explained for simple thing, 32 into 32. It can be 64 into 64 or 128 into 128. Or 1920, 1980 by 1080. Whatever. I think for the steam one, we have taken 300. Remember 299, I was taking into 512. Because steam, we are training that in RGB. First taking, we are taking that part. So it's also important what dimension you get. So here are the images, what we are taking in the photograph, it will be. RGB images, I think. Yeah, those would be like very big. Big images. Yeah. So that modeling we will again take it in the next step. So uh, one of the ways that can be to pass an image to a neural network, it could just be that you have that image, 32 cross 32. You take each and every single pixel, straighten out the entire image. Take the first row, then the second row, then the third row, combine it in one uh, single row, and then pass those numbers onto the input layer. So for example, if the image was 32 cross 32 cross 1, if, if it was just grayscale, then we would have 1296 input nodes, each one corresponding to one pixel of the image. And the problem with that would have been, for example, let's assume that you have 1920 by 1080 photos taken from your iPhone or something. Passing that to a network would involve each of those nodes having separate weights which need to be trained. So having so many weights to train requires a lot more amount of data and a lot more amount of computational time. So the technique that was developed was called CNNs, Convolutional Neural Networks. And the idea behind it was that we need to minimize the number of learnable parameters. So let's say for example if you have a 32 cross 32 image and all of the input nodes have two weights coming out of them. So that would instantly mean 32 times 32 times two weights to be learned. So what CNNs do is, for example, you can see the image of a person over here. What they will do is, so here, this image of the person is going to be passed through the net and the way it is going to be done is you will have certain filters. A filter is just a box. Let's say, for example, I take a 5 plus 5 box and that box is going to be convolved over the entire image. For example, Taking, uh, taking a 5 cross 5 box, taking a 5 cross 5 box, placing it at this image, computing some value, and then convolving it over the entire image. Taking that box and putting it on different parts of the image, taking it all over the image and computing some values. That is called convolving. And the number of parameters are then reduced to 5 into 5, 25 parameters which need to be learned and those 25 parameters will be taken all over the image and uh, something will be computed based on that. So you are understanding what is the advantage of the convolutional neural net CNN. It is actually we are filtering that this part, this part into five, maybe five boxes or filters and so that the parameters is not that much in thousands if the district and goes to maybe 20 or 25 parameters it gets passed and it gets trained. So that's why CNN is more advantages for the face detection where we will use CNN for our also face detection part. Okay, let's say that this is one image that you have and the filter you have chosen is a 2 cross 2 filter. So first of all you will place the filter over here and then this filter has some values associated with it. P1, P2, P3, and P4. These are the only learnable parameters you have now. So now, first of all, you will make some computation based on the values of the image and these values, placing it over it. 
and then this whole uh, filter is going to be taken sideways by a stride of one or you can change the stride as well so this value is then taken all over the image and then subsequently down all over the image and let's say for example the size of this image was x over x and this filter is n cross n so the size that you will get of the subsequent image would be x minus n plus 1 Does everyone understand why that would be? Because towards the end, there will not be left any more room to go sideways. So the number of the size of the filter will also change the size of the image you get out of it. So similarly, in this photo, what is happening is the photo of the person is being transferred, filters are being applied, and subsequent images are being generated, which are smaller in size. You can see how the size is decreasing because basically it's extracting the features and then the features get this much from one that's why you will find when you read a lot of papers or anything that out of million of features this much features it comes that how many features you are training how one lakh images are there it comes 412 features it comes up from there so feature extraction is so faster when we use gpu and from there we are finding so this part is important to understand the filtration and the proper so let's say you have one photo and you have five filters you want to apply all five filters on that photo you take all of those filters one by one you convolve them over the image get a subsequent small, smaller image and then all the other four filters are also used in the same process you get a same a similar four other photos and they are stacked together in front of each other like for example in the corn player one you can see many subsequent blue images right so all of those are results of different filters being applied and subsequently it gets shorter in the green corn player 2 and the length increases. What the length means is that you are applying more and more filters. What the size means is that the image is getting smaller due to the application of that filter. So doing this process over and over again results in more and more increase in the length and decrease in the size of the images being, uh, being taken out of this. So, at one point of time, this just becomes one long vector of values which is, which is no longer an image, but just integers. There are no longer matrices being stacked together, they are just numbers. For example, if at the end of all of this, I reached a matrix which was 2 cross 2, and my filter was also 2 cross 2. So, for example, if, my, if the computation being performed was a multiplication of all of these values, and then addition of all of those values, I would just get an integer. So towards the end, like about con layer 5, that would be uh, the image has been converted into a long vector of numbers. Then those numbers, which would be significantly lesser than the numbers you could have, would have gotten from the image itself, you then apply that to the fully connected layers, FC6 and FC7 and subsequent layers and then you can just use a logistic regression or neural network classifier. So last layer is the classifier for the predictive modeling. Logistic you can use, SPN use and if you are using Google's architecture that is Inception, Fremont, then Softmax Google uses, right? So these are the last layers for the prediction. So basically what happens initially you can see the face is there, here we don't require, it is getting pre-processing. That means when here we are just removing it, it has become smaller. You can see the hair part in the just this one. So this uh, from this image only it gives a very good understanding. See initially the person was having hair and it was bigger, right? Gradually it's there. It's uh, it has moved from here. It has just concentrating the distance at the eyes and ear. So gradually it is becoming a smaller usage of the filters. And more and more it's learning, it's, uh, it is actually having the parameters going forward. So it is increasing in the dimensions and then gradually get decreasing. And obviously at the last end it will have a support vector machine as a classifier supervised you can use because it is getting trained in the vector, right? The vector part we have also discussed last time, SBM is there, the structural equation modeling vector is there. So the value gets stored into the vector. And that's why we say the feature extraction, we need stored, how ANN works at the back end, only this vector, this number actually gets stored, which it learns, and based on that, it gives the output, whether the correct or not, whether the image passes or not. Here, so this part, in this way, 
this architecture is used for the face detection it is used for detection as well that there is a human face and it can uh, recognize also so this can be not only used in insurance it can be used also the army drdo part they can understand that in the border someone face is there or not so detection is easily it falls it will give in the computer it will come that someone is trying to entry into the borders and if, if you have the photograph of some of the agents then it will clearly recognize from the agent and will say give a alert that those agents were wanted they are trying to trespass so these are the two features and that's why cnn is one of the most powerful tools used in this face detection as well as recognition till now any question yeah number of layers uh, parameters are all defined on the based on the number of images we have then we have that what type of the photograph like 32 by 32 bitmap will work or not then uh, we have to see that what are the features it get extracted at the end then we define the number of layers and number of epochs that we will get do in a kind of a practical that if this many images are there i think i have trained with three epochs kind of thing when i have less number i have done in the jupiter notebook you see the very minimum kind of thing accuracy we have achieved is also good level i think 80 to 100 percent well number of images are very less so layers will obviously become very less and uh, more of all um, the number of layers that you have will depend on the uh, will depend on the difficulty of the task as well for example if you have uh, if you have like a photo which is very high resolution then you would require more layers to reduce that um, photo down to a single vector of numbers keeping in mind that the learnable parameters you want is supposed to be small for example if you have a 1920 by 1080 pixel image you can't take a filter of 200 by 200 because that would defeat the purpose of the cnn so having a limitation on the size of the filter um, uh, means that more and more layers of the cnn will be added so as to make that image into a vector of numbers which can be passed to a fully connected layer so um, and these are all experimental results once you um, once you have created a model trained it tested its accuracy then um, doing this entire process again and again with different architectures of the cnn is actually in practice this needs to be done to see which structure performs how well so this is actually a hyper parameter which needs to be tuned by experimentation as uh, he rightly pointed out the architecture part we have also mentioned so one architecture is a bgg model is architecture is the simplest one if you just try bgg was there in the basic then you will find the rest net is there rest net is there then you find the inception model These are the architecture has to be used for training the model. Like uh, we have a very simple case. He has rightly told that when you have a very complex one, maybe it gets trained fast in inception. Then we use inception. We have used all three models for the skin one to train, and we have also found BGG. I think there are BGG 16 is there, BGG 19 is there. So BGG 19 and uh, between rest net inception, we have not found any uh, much difference. Though It is claimed that it is a very fast model. Can be trained fast. Highly complex can be trained, but when the model is very simple kind of thing, so you can use the BGG part also. This architecture gets trained using GPU. One week we have to run it, and in one week you will get the it gets trained. What happens? Why architecture is important? That you don't have to train from the very basics. This architecture already contains everything within it. You have to just uh, do the optimization part. into it. when you run the model through the architecture um so i think what sir is uh, saying here is about transferring the learning that you have already done in some architectures to your own models for example let's say google or a big company was working on some project and they built a highly complex neural network trained it using a lot of servers and a lot of computation power a lot of gpus so the same process is not going to be feasible for a student like me or student like yourself so having certain architectures pre trained is the practice of transferring learning 
from already trained networks to your own. For example, take the analogy if someone already knows about data analytics and his neural network is trained for that. So teaching them the entire process would be the uh, analogy of training the network again. Whereas transferring the weights of the network back to a new network would mean you have transferred the learning instantly. So the same thing is going on in BGG and ResNet. These are pre-trained modules which have certain features already trained in them. For example, if you wanted to uh, recognize uh, an image as a person, if your iPhone 10 or something recognizes your face, the first thing it needs to do is detect a face. That detection of a face is already done, is, a, is an already trained model. So having weights of those images transferred directly to your model would help your model do whatever it wants further on. So that you can directly use this architecture to use the functional programming part. We'll also show how to put in the, uh, maybe after the break, Python input parameters were there and output parameter. I think using PyTorch we have done, right? So maybe simple one we will show that how it exactly looks. Because what happens when you go to the industries, all these things, what you remember is remember. They will give you just an architecture where nothing you will learn. Because very few industries, when they are not getting the results, then they will develop their own architecture which requires a lot of computers. Training from the very beginning is really a hard task. Because we have almost worked for one year for those skin cancer and all those images. We have even tried different architecture. We are finding same kind of results. Uh, like uh, more number of variability we are increasing. That okay, let extend from the cancer to benign increase it to, to another disease uh, which are benign like keratosis and psoriasis is there and carcinoma, melanoma on the skin. Four moment we have divided into four learning accuracy drop from 100 to 80. Because we have not trained our model. Because we have used those architecture which is commonly used in 80-90% cases. So wherever you go, mostly will find you will be given this thing but you have to identify based on the problem you are going to take the architecture. It's a very complex one. People will go into that simpler one. It usually works with the same level. Usually, they work in the same. And architecture already does what we have been discussing till now. So for you, when you run the course, it become easy. But just you should have this clarity so that anyone can ask any basic questions. So basic is now. I think clear to everyone in the first half. The most simpler way because when you go to the text or any PPTs. It's very difficult where from they are starting and where they are ending. So we have discussed a long between us that let's make it from your end of it. Clear Mohan? Yes. So this part, uh, maybe after the break we can take so that you feel more 10 minutes break we can take. Any and then doubts? Also, till any now doubts? any doubts? Because we are going to use CNN for those photographs. Now it's clear to you that CNN will be used, right? Not the, again, we'll explain the next one that LSQM and RN will explain, but mostly you find this is the best use. CNNs are the most important part of the year. Any question? Or we can break? I think, I think uh, Akash has to help for the rest of the photographs. Those who have already taken photographs, they can start for the break. And any questions you have, you can ask in the break time. Uh, you click now, one by one you come. Right? Uh, third group you come in between. And then you also come, you haven't taken. You can stop the record. I think uh, we have a form. Pintu sir, that form where we have kept. 